Hi there everybody and welcome back to my channel, this time for some advice about the Summer 2022 Advanced Information Document from OCR about their chemistry exams on the A specification for A-level chemistry. This document is freely available on their website and I'll put a link in the video description so that you can access it if you've managed to miss it or if you've lost your copy. In this video, I'm going to discuss with you what I've noticed about the document, what they've said on Twitter alongside the announcement of this paperwork, and how I recommend you use this list alongside a hefty pinch of salt in preparation for your summer 2022 exam series. The first thing I noticed was the reference to practical work. The practical endorsement is not covered in this document at all, but we know that chemistry A-level carries with it a lot of practical work, and they've made it quite clear with this information at the start that the assessment of practical skills will occur throughout the papers. What's nice about the list, though, is even though this is just a list of the major topics that are in the exams, they have put this little section after certain topics in brackets that says includes practical skills. So what you definitely need to be doing if you're nervous about how practical work will come up in the exam is for each one of these little topics that mentions how it includes practical skills, you need to have a discussion with your teacher. You need to look up in the specification how practical work can come up in this style of exam question. So for example, for acids, bases, and buffers, I'd be thinking maybe titration curves. I'd be thinking about titrations themselves. Um, if you're thinking about amounts of substance, maybe it's preparation of a standard solution. Enthalpy changes here, it could be a calorimeter. There's lots of obvious links. And so I definitely recommend that you chat with your teacher and read the specification to see what kind of practical work could be linked to these individual topics. Something else I also noticed, it mentions here that the list, and I've already nodded towards this a little bit, the list shows the major focus of content in the exam. Students are advised that content not listed may appear on the question paper. If you want a high grade in your summer 2022 exams, and if you're watching this video, I'm getting that you definitely want that, you certainly do not want to only revise content from this list. I know your teachers will be saying this to you anyway, but I'm saying it to you now as well. If you only revise the content listed, you're going to be surprised on the day of the exam when aldehydes comes up in a bit of a bigger way. Maybe esters comes up in a more robust question than you're expecting. You've got to make sure you do general revision. And don't be surprised when something like bonding, which isn't mentioned on the list of the next page, is included in things like the multiple choice questions. Both papers one and paper two have multiple choice questions at the start. There's 15 multiple choice on each of paper one and paper two. And these are only going to be a minor part of the exams. And so as a result, OCR have kind of backed up via a tweet they sent to me on the day that this got released, that they don't consider topics that are mentioned in the multiple choice questions to be part of the major focus of the exams. That means that whilst this list is going to be very, very useful in your early preparation for your 2022 revision, it's also going to be a limited list when it comes to the detail that you need to consider with your overall revision. It's going to be very good the night before the exams. It's going to be very good for giving you a starting focus on your revision, but you've got to make sure you revise everything else in between. Please don't lose sight of that. So moving on to the individual papers themselves, paper one. Hard to be certain what's exactly going to come up here. It's going to be hard to be certain about any of this, but there's definitely lots of nods towards titrations. We've got the amount of substance reference at the top, which to be fair is at the top of all of these lists, which I think is very telling. Please make sure that you review section 2.1.3 of the spec to see all the different kinds of things that are actually included there. You may have never looked at it before, so now is the best time. You've also got acids, bases, and buffers. And you've got acids at the bottom just here. So lots of nods here towards titrations, which is to be expected. Maybe standard solution preparation, titration curves. So looking at how pH can be used from module five. There's lots of things here to consider. We've also got transition elements and periodicity. Never underestimate transition elements 
and periodicity. There's more in there than you think. Transition elements exam questions have taken a really detailed turn. You've got loads of things in there to do with things like empirical and molecular formula. You've got bits of qualitative analysis. You've got complex ions, precipitations, loads of stuff in there. And periodicity includes everything from ionization energies to bonding. So you've really got to make sure you don't underestimate transition elements and periodicity. They are very very, very important. Some of the other aspects of the paper one pre-release here isn't too surprising. The how fast topic from the second year of the course, lots of orders of reaction, the Arrhenius equation, for instance, there's loads of content there that you would revise anyway. It's just making sure, especially with things like the Arrhenius equation, because it was new to the specification in 2015, just make sure you're definitely sure with that. For enthalpy and entropy, I do actually have some videos on this for delta G and delta S, which summarize the content really well. And I'll put a link to them at the top of the page now and also in the video um, end screen. To be honest here, it looks like good coverage. There's nothing here that looks a bit more inflated than others. There's nothing here that surprises me with the list. It's all really good core chemistry and a good distribution of calculations here. And remember that it doesn't include everything. There's gonna be other things from modules two, three, and five, which are assessed in paper one that aren't included in this list. Personally, I think it looks really fair. Make sure that you use this list as a starting point for your revision. But as I mentioned before, revise everything in modules two, three, and five well in advance of paper one. Moving on to paper two. Now for paper two, you've got the obvious versus the hidden. Straight away, alkenes at the top of the list. That did surprise me. But then when you think about it, alkenes has got loads to it. Not only have you got all the different aliphatic reactions that you need to consider, so turning it into an alcohol, getting it to an alkane, things like that, you've also got isomerism, stereoisomerism specifically. So the EZ cis-trans isomerism, that could be a major focus here. You've also got Markovnikov's rule, which is included inside the electrophilic addition mechanism. It's obviously impossible to know for sure until we see the exams, but there's a lot in the alkenes topic. It is a very big part of module four. So if I was preparing for the summer exams, this would be the thing I would look at first because there's a lot to do here and it links really well in terms of your general revision of module four to all the other topics. We can link easily into things like bonding by looking at the bond angle inside the alkenes and other organic functional groups. We can also link to the other organic groups like alcohols and haloalkanes very easily from this. I think alkenes is not only an excellent starting point for your revision, but because it's so high up the major list here, I think it's an incredibly good place to start. Less obvious here is the organic synthesis. This is very, not misleading, I just think this is actually quite rich in content for how it looks in the list. Organic synthesis includes interconversion between lots of different functional groups. And have a look at the specification for this. It's a little bit vague, but it is nodding towards the idea of all the other groups interconverting between each other. The kind of organic synthesis question you should expect is a flow chart. So especially because we've got basic concepts of organic chemistry here, which is drawing molecules and naming them, your flowchart questions are bound to come up anyway, but this is definitely a nod towards them. You've also got carbonyl compounds here as a separate component, so not included in the organic synthesis. Carbonyl compounds, we're looking at aldehydes and ketones here. We're looking at nucleophilic additions. So we've got two types, one that uses the hydride ion as a nucleophile, the other that uses the cyanide ion as a nucleophile. And I think carbonyls there, again, much like alkenes, is a really good starting point for your revision when you want to consider the other functional groups, this time in module six. Aromatics doesn't surprise me at all. Aromatics has always been a big part of the exams. It's actually quite hard to integrate aromatics with the other aliphatic content because aromatics has got that big benzene structure to it. It's got things like phenol included, the Kekulé discussion. There's a lot there for aromatics that make it very often a standalone section of the exams. So that's not too surprising at all. For spectroscopy, 
I don't think anyone claps their hands and gets excited about spectroscopy exam questions. Well, maybe I do. But spectroscopy is, again, bound to be a big part of the exam papers. It's very often a level of response question. Please make sure that you can do the full analysis and prediction of a molecule's structure using infrared, using uh, NMR, both carbon and proton NMR, and make sure that you understand how mass spec, including fragment peaks, can be used to support the structure of an organic compound. Just a reminder for what I said at the start of this, for both of these exam papers, we of course don't know that this is going to be the only content on there. In fact, they've definitely suggested that it isn't. But we also have got the 15 multiple choice questions on each paper. And that could be 15 completely individual topics each time. So please make sure that you don't see this list as the be all and end all for your revision. You've got to make sure that anything missing from this list is revised in just as much detail because the 15 multiple choice could be the difference between your A and your B. It could be the difference between your A and your C potentially here because that is quite a large number of marks. You've got to make sure that you revise all the content but use this list as a starting point and definitely consider it in your night before revision. That takes us on to paper three. The toughest paper. Let's not beat around the bush with this. Unified chemistry is the toughest exam paper. The grade boundaries reflect it. The discussion online reflects it as well. This is definitely a tricky paper. And it's because anything from modules one right the way through to six can come up in this assessment. Now with module one, we're looking at your practical skills and you can see here, this is definitely the richest when it comes to the practical skills. We've got all of our major topics here and practically every single one of them has got mention of practical skills. When we consider that this exam is actually only 70 marks compared to the others, which are 100 marks each, we can definitely see how the practical work is a larger focus of the unified chemistry paper. In this list, there seems to be some big top-end focus on redox and electropotentials and chemical equilibrium. These topics actually go hand in hand with each other. There's no surprise that these two are side by side, because to really explain a lot of what's going on in the redox and electropotentials topic, you've got to be able to use the shifting equilibrium work that you do in module three. We've also got reference to organic chemistry coming back here with organic synthesis. We've got amino acids and spectroscopy down the list as well. So your organic revision doesn't stop at the end of paper two. There's also some repeat offenders here. If we have a look, we can see that spectroscopy is coming up again. And acids, bases and buffers, which came up on paper one, are also getting a second look in. We also get lattice enthalpy here, which is linked quite closely to the content that came up in paper one about enthalpy and entropy. So there's lots of links here to the other exam papers. And I think people have this concept that if it came up in paper one, it can't come up again in paper three. It absolutely can. Maybe not in as much detail, but don't suddenly stop your revision just because something came up in paper one and now you've decided it couldn't possibly come up again in paper three. This list, again, for unified chemistry, much like the others, is really fair. It's got great coverage of all different areas of the spec. So some general revision with lots of detail is still the best way to prepare. Don't obsess over the list. However, what I will say here, it is surprising to see redox and electrode potentials so high at the top of the list. That does suggest quite a big exam question on these, linking to practical work, linking to an electrochemical cell perhaps. So I'd make sure that you're good with your diagrams and make sure you know how to use language in discussion of the electrochemical series, linking that to equilibrium, of course. If you need video tutorials for that, I'll put the links at the end, but also if you click at the very top of the video, you'll find some videos linked there too. To finish up, I would like to point out that I'm going to put lots of information in the video description, and I'll keep adding to that over the course of the next couple of months. I'm also going to put links there to lots of other video content that might help with the individual topics identified here. And I'll create some playlists dedicated to these lists so you can use them as a starting point for your revision. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you use this list effectively in preparation for your summer 2022 exams. And until next time, happy revising.